Uh, yeah, I have one for Matt and uh, one for everyone else. Okay. We talked about that on Tuesday. Yeah, the one for me is that all, all the pages are blank, right? <laughs> That's right. All right, one thing uh, to begin with today. Yesterday, the uh, Bureau of Educational and Cultural Affairs launched the Academy for Women Entrepreneurs. And this is a new initiative supporting women entrepreneurs around the world. The Academy will equip women with the practical skills needed to create sustainable businesses and enterprises. Through an inclusive learning community, women uh, from around the world will be given opportunities to explore the fundamentals of business, including creating business plans and raising capital, with the goal of building a better future for families and communities around the world. The inaugural cohort will feature women in 26 countries, primarily Latin America, the Caribbean, and Africa. And that's going to include the Bahamas, Barbados, Chile, Colombia, Costa Rica, the Dominican Republic, Ecuador, El Salvador, Ghana, Guatemala, Haiti, Honduras, Jamaica, Kenya, Nigeria, Papua New Guinea, Peru, Senegal, Spain, South Africa, Tanzania, Uganda, Venezuela, Zambia, and Zimbabwe. The pro Venezuela. Venezuela. Okay. Yeah. The program will support the White House led Global Development and Prosperity Initiative, which is designed to empower at least fifty million women worldwide by twenty twenty five to fulfill their economic potential and in doing so create conditions for increased stability and security and prosperity for all. And with that, I'd be happy to take some questions. I got two extremely brief ones. One just to clear something up on Venezuela. Yesterday, the vice president said that 77 additional um, visas had been revoked or, um, or whatever it is that you guys do for, for that. And then today, the assistant secretary, Kim Breyer, tweeted that 77 additional visas are they the same ones, or are we... The same 77, right. So, okay. All right. so yesterday, right. um, that was an additional 77 yeah, visa revocations, and to date, more than 250 okay. is the number. But you're not doing these in blocks of 77? No, so there's not, nothing okay. special. All right, and then secondly, I don't know if you're aware of this report that came out of San Diego last night about DHS and the, and the um, uh, CBP... Um, Customs and Border Protection flagging U.S. citizen travelers uh, to Mexico for specific, uh, for additional questioning, etc. Are you aware of this? I, I have seen that story. I have. Does the State Department have anything to do with this? And if it does not, can you say whether it would uh, exceed to some kind of, to, to, a, to a request from another federal government agency to provide information about the passport information about Americans for what would seem to be non-criminal or, or just kind of political uh, actions or reporting or activism. What, what I can say is uh, definitively the State Department has nothing at all, um, no role to do with any of this. Um, this, is apparent, this is apparently related to actions that are taken by uh, other governmental agencies. Um, so I'm not going to speculate what those are. Of course, law enforcement, uh, you know, possibly um, could be involved, but I don't want to speculate. And then if you're, for further information, I think the Department of Homeland Security would be the best place to, to, to go. You're going to knock this down as hypothetical, but I'm going to ask it anyway. If another government had done this, what would the administrate? What would this, the building's um, position be on that? Would that would would that be something that would raise concerns from the State Department if, say, this was the government of France? Or... Yeah. I, I, I'm not going to speculate. I don't want to uh, do a hypothetical matter. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Francesco. No, sure. sure. On North Korea <laughs> and uh, reports that. Um, uh, so high site has been rebuilt by North Koreans. I wanted to know if you guys have uh, reached out to the North Koreans to ask an explanation and 
at least if you have had any contact with them since the summit in Hanoi on Tuesday, you weren't able to answer to that. Before I get to your question, I should have writ, said, mentioned something at the top just for the general group. Um, at 4 o'clock here today, there will be an on-background briefing by a senior State Department official on the subject of North Korea, for anyone that's interested. So there will be uh, some more subject matter expert later today. But regarding your specific... In other words, Francesco, he's not going to answer your question. No, no. Yeah, no. I mean, <laughs> that is not what I just said, actually. And uh, what I would say is... Uh, if I can remember your question now, Francesca. <laughs> did you reach out to the North Koreans to get an explanation, or at yeah. least? Okay, I think the president spoke to this yesterday, and he said, "Were it to be true, uh, he would he would be disappointed." Um, but my question is different. Did you have any contact with North right. Koreans? Right, and I'm not going to be able to uh, discuss or confirm um, every communication that the United States is having with North Korea. But our message here publicly uh, and privately, for that matter, is we're ready. Um, we remain ready to engage North Korea in a constructive negotiation. Oh, please, Leslie. Um, Robert, but today there was a 2.1 magnitude earth tremor um, in North Korea in a mining town. Do you believe this has got anything to do with um, testing, a testing site, or any kind of testing or questionable behavior by the North Koreans? Yeah, I have. I've seen those reports. We're aware of them. I, I have no evidence uh, suggesting that to be the case. Robert, any on this subject, we, yeah. Mr. Gordon, please. Uh, just uh, a, a sort of policy question, not an intel question. Um, uh, President Trump and senior State Department officials uh, said that at the Hanoi summit, uh, Kim Jong-un had reaffirmed uh, the moratorium on missile test launches and nuclear tests. And uh, my question is, is it the U.S. understanding that this missile test uh, moratorium uh, also applies to satellite launches uh, should the North Koreans undertake such a activity from their satellite launch site. Uh, if they were to do that, would you consider that a breach of their missile test moratorium? I ask because of the reported work at that satellite launch site and uh, the history of dealing with North Korea in the Leap Day Agreement. Yeah, I, we've seen uh, those reports, and we're not going to comment on um, intelligence and regarding what would be our policy in this regard. I'm, I'm not going to respond uh, to that today. I'm going to defer on that. All right? Sure, right here, please. Uh, a little while ago, <laughs> President Trump said in the Oval Office that we'll let you know in about a year on North Korea. Can you elaborate on what that means for negotiations? To, we're free to the White House. I'm not so going to negotiations well, yeah. are ongoing? Said, please. Very quick question. The, you know, this on the occasion of the International Women's Day, there are 48 Palestinian women at the Damon prison. I mean, there are many more, but in this particular prison, uh, many of them, if not all of them, but many of them are in administrative detention that, you know, they just keep renew getting renewed all the time. You know, there are girls that have grown up to be women in there. I mean, there are mothers with their children. They are denied exercise and denied books and, and, and all these things. Could you look into it? Could you look into this issue? And what would you have to say to the Israelis? Would you urge them to release those who are on administrative detention, because that is not a policy that is that let's say Western democracies uh, uh, implement administrative detention. Okay. What I would say is, Said, I'm I'm not familiar with any of these cases that you're referencing, so I mean I, I would have to refer you to the government of Israel um, for more information. I um, understand. I, I, right. I know that you know I could be referred to the government of Israel and so on, and I probably know what they would say but uh, do you do you are you alarmed by this situation are you alarmed by uh, young girls 14 13 15 uh, that are that get to prison and they spend years and they grow up to be women uh, in the same prison so denied any access to uh, you know recourse of or legal recourse does that bother you does that you know uh, you, do you feel uncomfortable knowing that your ally Israel is doing that Again, I, I know nothing about that, um, but I would say that as close partners and allies with Israel, we, do, we have frank discussions 
and uh, on a wide range of issues. Right. Lori, I, I don't know. Think, I don't. I, I don't nothing about the specific cases. That you've been asking anything. about this for like every day for the last like five years. Forty-seven. I don't know anything about these cases. Go ahead. Iranian Lori. President Hassan Rouhani will visit Baghdad on Sunday with a trade delegation. So I have two questions. One, do you have any comment on his visit in general? And two, any comment on the trade delegations, Iraq complying with the sanctions on Iran? I would say that our uh, concerns about Iran's malign influence in the region are well known. In Iraq, uh, Iran's support of armed groups, many of which engage in criminal behavior uh, that undermines the security of Iraqi civilians, especially those from persecuted religious communities. And that's why we insist uh, that armed groups in Iraq must be under the effective command and control of the central government. And we believe strongly in Iraq's sovereignty, um, that it must be respected. And we remain concerned about any actions uh, that could heighten sectarian tensions inside of Iraq. So our position is we urge Iran to uh, avoid actions that undermine the authority of the state, um, efforts that are aimed at efforts that are aimed at promoting reconciliation amongst communities in Iraq and the rights of all Iraqi citizens. And so your second question was regards to a trade delegation. I would say that the question of Iraq's foreign relations is for the Iraqi government uh, to answer. And um, you know, after years of conflict, we believe that uh, the Iraqis, first and foremost, uh, would, would value their, their sovereignty and independence. To follow up on your statement about the pro-Iranian militias, you sanctioned al-Nujaba the other day. There's also calls for you to sanction Qais Khazali's militia, Asab al-Haq which was involved in attacking Americans and other coalition members during the Iraq, during Operation Iraqi Freedom. What do you have to say about the fact that that militia still remains active in Iraq and that Khazali has 15 seats in the Iraqi parliament? Yeah, uh, nothing further uh, on that today, Lori. Sorry. Yeah, please, right here. Um, on China, um, Chinese telecommunication company Huawei uh, filed a lawsuit uh, suing the U.S. government for prohibiting uh, the federal agency uh, of using its equipment. Um, do you have anything on the latest development? Is there any dip diplomatic conversation between U.S. and China on Huawei's legal battle? Um, regarding this litigation, I, I don't have any comment on that because it's pending litigation. Um, that's really all I have to say about uh, that lawsuit. Um, we have made our, um, you know, more generally, aside from that lawsuit, on the question of Huawei, that that's something that we have spoken about uh, regularly uh, and consistently in recent days on the Secretary's travel, especially. Um, the United States advocates for secure telecom networks and supply chains that are free from suppliers subject to foreign government control or undue influence, which would pose, you know, risks of unauthorized access and malicious cyber activity. And it's because we believe that these risks uh, posed by vendors are subject to extrajudicial or unchecked compulsion by foreign states that do not share our values need to be weighed rigorously before making procurement decisions on these technologies. So we are in the process of routinely engaging our allies and our partners to provide them with information, to help them to evaluate the risks, to exercise vigilance, so they can secure their own systems and protect their own people. This is, uh, this is something that we are uh, engaged in, and this is a decision that every nation must make for itself. Secretary Pompeo is going to Houston uh, next week 
for energy conference to address, in your words, to address um, how America's energy revolution strengthens national security in an age of renewed great power competition. And meanwhile, we understand there are a group of 11 senators, bipartisan senators, has uh, wrote a letter uh, and asking the uh, government to um, look at new issue and also to um, call for a ban on elect electrical device, meaning inverters produced by Huawei, not to be used in the energy infrastructure. Um, First, do you agree with this, those uh, senators' uh, call? And secondly, should we expect Sen uh, con uh, Secretary Pompeo to warn the energy sectors not to use products, specifically inverters produced by Huawei? Re regarding um, the first specific call, as I understand, I'm not familiar with that, that specific ask, and I don't have a a specific answer to give, so I'm, I'm going to refrain from doing so. Um, regarding what the Secretary is going to be raising next week, I, he's going to be talking about energy policy uh, as a matter of national security, and on that I'm, I'm certain that our the Indo-Pacific will very much be um, a focus, uh, but I don't want to get too far ahead of what the, the Secretary will or will not be speaking about next week. Hope we'll have some more information uh, to give you in that regard. So, let's go to Huawei. Thank you. A Huawei. Okay, let's go a little bit more Huawei. Sure. So, you include Huawei among the We do. I'm not going to comment on uh, on the legislation of the Department of Justice. Well, Thank you. The news reports coming out of the UN building in New York City says that U.S., France, and Britain have uh, moved a new resolution in UN Security Council for terrorist designation of Azhar Masood. Uh, U.S. has U.S. and France have done this in the past, but China has always blocked it, saying that. Uh, you people don't have enough evidence against Azhar Masood. So what has changed now? What Do you have any fresh evidence? Have you talked to the Chinese? They are convinced this time? Uh, Our views on Masood Azhar and jaish e Mohammed are well known. Jesh e Mohammed is a United Nations designated terrorist group that has been responsible for numerous terrorist attacks and is a threat to regional stability. Masood Azhar is the founder and leader of JAM. As far as your specific question on United Nations Sanctions Committee deliberations, those are confidential. And as such, it's not something that uh, I'm going to be able to comment on uh, specific matters in that regard. But we'll continue to work with the Sanctions Committee to ensure that the list is updated and that it's accurate. Let's go to Shri. Let's go behind Shri. Please, go ahead. Thanks. Um, my question is also about India and Pakistan. As you know, Pakistan's arrested 44 people. Uh, who are members of uh, terror organizations. In the past, Pakistan has taken action against uh, such individuals, but they haven't been uh, credible or long-lasting. This time, do you think, how's the U.S. viewing this? Is the U.S. viewing this as more of the same old, same old, or is it viewing it as a structural break, that something's different this time? And if you're optimistic about things this time, why the optimism? I would say that we... United States notes these steps, and we continue to urge Pakistan to take sustained, irreversible action against terrorist groups that will prevent future attacks and that will promote regional stability. And we reiterate our call for Pakistan to abide by its United Nations Security Council obligations to deny terrorists safe haven and block their entry to funds.
I'll leave it at that. Please, Rich. Um, can you confirm that uh, Venezuela has deported an American citizen and journalist to the United States? He's in, on his way to Miami, as I understand, and we're, uh, we're happy on that regard. Yes. Please. Let's cry right there. That's just one. Thank you. Actually, my subject of the question is kind of old, but it might be new anytime, sometime soon now. Um, Mr. Paladino, as you know, State Department has held uh, some of those individuals in Congo accountable and even imposed... I'm sorry, where? Congo. Congo. Yeah, uh, in Congo accountable and uh, even imposed some sanctions due to human rights abuse and undermining the democracy, releasing a statement about that. But the uh, Sisi government has been uh, reportedly torturing and executing opposition members without a fair trial, as it happened with nine young Egyptian citizens a couple of weeks ago, and is it about to happen uh, again due to ongoing trials? Um, but we haven't heard anything from the State Department about this. Uh, do you have any comment on that, sir? Uh, to prevent the further uh, executions, maybe. We we discuss uh, human rights um, regularly uh, in all of our interactions um, when we engage with other nations, and that includes Egypt. I don't have anything specific on the particular case that you're raising today, and I would want to uh, gather a little more information before responding specifically to that. But we have raised, and will continue to raise, at senior levels, um, the fundamental importance for human rights and fundamental freedoms, and the need for a robust civil society. I'll stop there, please. Nicaragua. Okay, we'll try Nicaragua, please. Does the U.S. support this dialogue, and specifically, if the U.S. thinks that the Catholic Church, which were very relevant in the previous dialogue, if they should participate as a witness in the negotiations? Yeah, we, we, we continue to urge the Ortega government to take concrete actions now um, to join the church-led peace dialogue and to negotiate in good faith. That's what I'm saying. Please, Syria. Okay. Uh, so, uh, as you know, there are thousands of women and children uh, who have escaped Barros. Uh, the women, of course, they were uh, ISIS brides, and the children are their, are their children. So what's your stance on the children? Uh, and um, should they suffer for the crimes their parents have committed? Uh, our position on foreign terrorist fighters, um, you know, We've, we've, we've spoken about previously here, but you're asking specifically about children that, that could, I mean, we're, we're taking, those on the ground are taking every precaution possible um, as that, uh, you know, the, the final fight uh, continues and, and we're coming close to an end. Um, there, are, there, are, there are many groups on the ground. Um, with whom we're engaging uh, that are very involved in that. And of course, we're, we're trying to m ensure everything is done to minimize uh, any danger. Is anything done like by the State Department's Human Rights uh, and Labor Department to make sure these children are, are safe uh, and not harmed uh, in the process of trying to, to bring the mothers or the fathers to justice? Uh, we're, working, um, we're working with those groups that are on the ground um, in this regard, and, uh, and we will continue to do so. Yeah, please, Christina. Why it took you guys six days to put out a statement about the OPCW findings on the Duma attack? Six days ago would have been Saturday morning, and I had just gotten back from Hanoi. I'm March sorry. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, yeah. It came out. I, we got it today. I know. <laughs> no, but, I mean, sorry. We're slower. Well, don't apologize to me, but I mean, if you want your, it just seems to me to be yeah. smart and from a communications point of view that if you want your sense, your your stance on something known, you should 
try and get it out a little bit more contemporaneously. With again, you. I again, I, wa I want to hire you for like, uh, our uh, communications team at some point. It's like point is taken. condolences for President Truman's death. We'll right be now. better. We'll be better. Christina, Christina had a I question. Just, I just wanted to ask a follow-up. Um, uh, to that point, though, is there any kind of State Department policy in the offing, in the works, to deal with the kids of these foreign fighters, especially foreign fighters, that you said you're not going to repatriate, the Hodomathala comes comes to mind because it just seems to me it's it's a little short sighted to say, okay, so now we've got a bunch of kids of people who align themselves with terrorists in refugee camps growing up, I'm assuming even angrier at the US and their parents would be, isn't this by not having a way to deal with this, aren't you kind of shooting yourselves in the foot when it comes to trying to deal with these with these policies and these people and making sure there's not another generation looking to join ISIS and start this all over again? We're, 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 we're taking a look at these issues and uh, we're going to continue to do so, but I don't have any policies to announce today. Let's go to Leslie, please. Uh, I have a twofer, as they say. Um, President Erdogan said yesterday that uh, his country would never turn back from its deal to purchase the S-400 from Russia, and that it would actually also look at the S-500 from Russia. Does this in any way, and you've probably seen that the currency is moving, the lira is is reacting to this because of it provides some, you know, more tensions before between the countries. I, I, what is your reaction to that? Is it a, a, a do or die, you know, a rule that they are absolutely cannot buy this? Is there a middle road here? I I was I I explained the policy yesterday in detail, and I would refer for back to that. Uh, I have nothing additional to add to what we said yesterday. And then uh, on Zimbabwe, please. Um, yesterday, the or the day before that, the president <clears throat> extended the sanctions against Zimbabwe. Um, it comes at a time when African leaders want those sanctions lifted. Um, uh, is there any, why did the, the president extend them, and is there any discussions going on with the new government to lift some or all of them? Right, so you're referring to the March 4th renewal? Correct. Which, um, which the president put out. Right. Um, which would maintain targeted sanctions um, on individuals and entities in Zimbabwe that are responsible for undermining democratic processes and institutions. Um, the, the basis of that is something that is renewed uh, annually and has been done for yeah, the basis. No, that is I'm the basis of law. Uh, yes. <laughs> it's done under, um, it's in pursuant to the International Emergency Economic Powers Act, which are various uh, executive orders under that. The so you believe that, that um, nothing has improved under the new government? I would say that these sanctions target certain persons um, and senior, who are senior officials uh, in the government of Zimbabwe that have participated in human rights abuses related to political repression or they've engaged in facilitating public corruption by senior officials this is not a this is not comprehensive sanctions this is targeted sanctions against specific individuals and the renewal that was that took place on the 4th is does not add any new names. It is simply a renewal of the of the sanctions that were targeted sanctions that were already in place. And does that, so and nothing's improved. We believe that uh, President Emerson Mnangagwa has yet to implement the political and economic overhaul. Required to improve the country's reputation with the community of nations and with the United States, frankly. Um, the actions of the targeted individuals uh, continue to undermine Zimbabwe's democratic processes. And I'll stop there. So we. Well, we're also seriously concerned about uh, 
the ongoing human rights abuses in Zimbabwe. One more, Lali. No, I already called in yesterday. What's going on in Afghanistan? Do you have any update on Ambassador Khalilzad's talks to the Taliban? Has any progress for the progress been made? Let me check. No updates from yesterday <laughs> or two days ago, no, but the talks but continue. Talks are continuing, I would say. So how long is going to stay there, do you know? Uh, I don't have uh, an end, um, but, you know, we remain committed um, to the efforts there, and uh, that, that's something that we're going to continue to pursue. Um, Special Representative Khalil Azad is, is, is you know, active on the ground right now with his counterpart, uh, and we've, we've spoken about that recently. Um, I don't have any uh, a new information on how the talks are progressing, but it's something that we're, of course, watching closely. The Secretary has indicated as much. He continues to watch this. We're all watching this very closely, and uh, no updates to provide, though, today. Please. No, but U.S. Embassy in Riyadh. Embassy in Riyadh. Guys, we're going to call it there. That Hold is on the end for today. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I'm going to – so you can't ask it, I'll ask it. Do you okay. have any comments on this report about the embassy staff in Riyadh being kept out of Jared Kushner and Jason yeah, Greenblatt's you. meetings there? Yeah. And secondly, can you explain – why exactly this Finnish journalist was her the award uh, International Women of Courage Award was rescinded? Why why did that happen? On the first one, I'm not, I'm not familiar with the report. I haven't heard anything about that, um, and I don't want to speculate. On the second one, yeah, I've seen that report. Oh, I'm sure you have. Yeah. <laughs> what I would say is. Um, We made a mistake. Um, this was a regrettable error. In rescinding it. In rescinding. We – no, 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 no. We uh, incorrectly no. notified this, this, this individual that she had been selected as a finalist. Uh -huh. This was an error. This was a mistake. Um, but she hadn't been selected as a finalist. She had not. We regret – the error. Uh, and to be clear, we admire this journalist's uh, achievements as a journalist, and that was the basis of her nomination by, from, by Embassy Helsinki. Okay, so the process here is that the embassy, wherever the person is, and various embassies nominate people, it comes back here, these the nominations are looked at, and then you guys make a decision. Somehow, someone screwed up here and notified her that she had won but yes. she hadn't yes so that that's the short so it has yes. nothing to do with any social media commentary that is critical of the, the president or this administration I, i've seen that that speculation um i'm not going to be able to go further into weighing the merits of who was selected whether one person had more merit versus the other that's internal um but I, but I can say uh, we regret the error, and um, we've got to do better in that regard. I'll leave it at that. We're done.